Hi, this is Tom with the fourth episode in this series showing you how to make a detailed keyboard in Blender. This is a bumper episode where we make the case, the stabilizers, as well as some screws at the end. This series includes four modeling tutorials and two that deal with texturing. I'm going to upload a new episode each day, so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out. I'm going to assume that you know the basic functions of Blender, but to recap, to add an object is Shift A, to switch between Edit Mode and Object Mode is Tab, to zoom in and out is Scroll Wheel, and to orbit around your part is Middle Click. By the end of this episode, we are hopefully going to have a finished keyboard, so let's get on with it. Let's start by hiding all of our stuff we've moved for, apart from the PCB which we are going to use as a reference for our stabilizers. So for them, we're going to add in a cube, which is around five mil. I'm going to go, we're positioning it on top of these holes. And then we're going to scale it to be about four mil. So that is now, if we look on here, there's four mil, -ish, four and a half. That's what we want. So now we're going to move it up and position it in around the middle, a bit higher than the middle. So now we can make the general shape of the stabilizer by extruding these faces to make a rectangle. And then we're going to delete this face, this edge, or dissolve it in this case, dissolve. And that just gives us a basic rectangular shape for us to make the top stem part of the, of the stabilizer. So we're going to move that in and we're going to move that one in. And I'll put a reference photo up, but it's this one's quite simple. So, And then we're going to extrude this face up about 0.2 just a bit and then we're gonna insert that face and extrude it down like that and then we're gonna insert that face and this is gonna be where we put the, the cross shape so you're probably comfortable with making these now so but just a recap go out of into object mode, add in a cube which is one millimeter and for the minute we can position it around in the middle but we'll edit that later, edit the actual size later, make sure you can see it. But now we are going to extrude four of the faces one mil. Now this one mil. And then we're going to do the same as last time. Select these vertices, edges and dissolve them. Then we're going to extrude the top face up. So face select mode by pressing three and select this face and E to extrude. That's a good height to be. And then we want to go into object mode and position it around there. That looks good. Maybe a bit lower. That looks good. Brilliant. Now we're going to properly position it in the direct center. And that looks good. Maybe a bit. Yeah, that looks good. So now we're going to parent them. Or you could, I'm actually, we're not going to use a parent. We're not, we're going to use a Boolean. We're going to make it actually part of it. So we're going to union and select the cube one. And then we can hide it and see that it works. So we can apply it and then we can delete cube not one. And then we've got basic shape. That's the basic shape of the stabilizer, but we can now add a few extras. So go into edit mode and add a little, so position it over the top, like here, and make sure it's aligned properly. And now we're going to add on this side, a little, little latch. It's got a little like cylindrical latch. So we're gonna add a loop cut so that makes it easier for us to attach it later and then facing down mode we can add a cylinder which is very low poly so 8 eight is good enough for this 
and then we're going to give it a radius of about 1.5 and position it over here in the direct center of that hole. And we do not want it that long, so make it much shorter. So around 5 mil. But you can change that. And then you can move this face. Make sure you've got x-ray mode on though. Because that doesn't work otherwise. So move it about halfway down. Then we can once again go back out of x-ray mode. And add another edge loop. This time uh, we're making little squares or rectangles. That we need to extrude out. And that sort of connect to the cylinder shape and that's going to be what's connecting it to the connecting the two meshes so then we can give these a bevel so they look at the part and now this face we're going to make the latch shape so extrude and then it's escape scale it out and then extrude that face and that's given us like a little latch thing and now we can scale that in so it's like a point to a point that looks good so it's now got a like a, a push in part if you want you can select these faces and give it a bit of thickness tall so we can just raise that up a bit there you go that looks perfect so now we need to make the front like foot bit so I'll put a reference picture up or you can look at my video and with the way we're going to do that is we're going to select we're going to add an edge loop by pressing ctrl R and then we're going to delete these dissolve these edges and extrude this face out and move it slightly so it's there and that's good now we can once again select these edges dissolve those as well but we're going to give this a bevel as well because we want it to be curved so around 4 or 5 and we want it 1.5 so that looks good that's going to give us a nice curved and now we're going to add the little foot the little hook that hooks underneath underneath the PCB to do that we're going to again so we're going to add in a cylinder and we're going to make it around 3 mil tall and we're going to position it where the hole is going to be so let's do that lower it down move it back there we go that looks good and now as you can see it's not really curved so we're going to first we're going to move this up so it's like a curved foot so let's extrude and then rotate on the x-axis extrude and rotate on the x-axis and we're slowly going to extrude a little foot and then we're going to scale in and that gives it a nice foot to like clamp to the PCB with and then we can flatten it out and raise it up so it grabs hold of the PCB and that looks pretty good it looks a bit wide around here but we can tidy that up by going into x-ray mode selecting these edges and just shrinking them down and then moving them in and that looks good so now we can add a load of bevels so that's fun you know what to do there and then you're pretty much done one side make it to whatever detail you like but this is all I'm doing for the purposes of this yeah we're just removing the sharpness of it all and that looks good so that's one side of it we now need to make the other side so to do that we can just duplicate it and we're going to need, know, need to know how far we're moving it. So we're going to go to X-ray mode, select all, and press Shift D to duplicate and move on the X-axis. And that's good for the for all of this these sized stabilizers. And for the space bar, you can just duplicate this and make it. You can extend or move around the stabilizers. But now you just need to connect them with a rotated cylinder and let's do that put that in this around where that needs to go scale it in and let's rotate it 90 degrees 
lower it down a bit and scale on the x-axis in this case there we go that looks perfect we can later give that a metallic look but now we're pretty much done with the stabilizers we can shade it smooth and add an edge split modifier to fix that weird shading and we can apply that and we're ready to duplicate it and once again for the space bar just align it with one on one side and go into edit mode select this half and move it to the right and we also need to rotate this one because the space bar is rotated so rotate it 180 and align it again because the space bar is rotated 90 degrees and then we can move them all down so select all and move it down so yeah that looks good. Now we can add a new collection, call it stabilizers, and add each of these to it. Now we can move on to the to the case. I'll be showing you how to make Poker 2 style case, really simple case, but it really it allows you to make whatever case you really like because you can just add bits to it. So we are going to add a plane which um, scale it in to be the right size just larger than a bit larger than that so I'm going around 100, 100 mil square that looks good and then yet again we want to give it some thickness so we can bevel it because bevels don't work on rectangles and we're going to select these to bevel and you want to give these around 16 because you really do see these and around 50 maybe more 75 75 mil of bevel and that's it you're done for that bit you now want to select this side and once again drag it all the way until you got to the edge of your keycap set and that's good now you need to make it whatever thickness you like I'm going for a rather slim case so that looks good and we want to rotate it slightly because keyboards are have like a slightly tilted shape to be more ergonomic and to like fit the hand better but that's that's good enough that's probably a bit too much in fact it's only a slight angle but now we need to make a flat bottom because at the minute it'll just rest on table flat button we work that angle we've just made won't be even there so we need to select this bottom face I'm gonna extrude it using E extrude it out a bit and then rotate it whatever angle we just did to give it a flat bottom that's the basic shape of the keyboard but now we can give it some details so I'm gonna taper this in on the on this y-axis so it's a bit smaller and then I'm gonna do the same on the X so scale s and that looks you can give this a nice bevel also just blend the gap that only needs four or so and we can do it about 20 so it just makes it more curved and looks nicer now at the minute it's not it's solid it needs to be hollow though so we could make it again and just make it a bit smaller but instead we're just going to duplicate it whilst in edit mode so select all by pressing a shift d and press escape to not move it now you want to scale it in on each axis separately to get the desired thickness you want the case to be so that looks good and then scale it on the Y and that looks good also Z you might want to use x-ray mode and scale it on the Z to be a bit shorter that looks good so and then bring it up to be the same height as the larger one and that looks good so what we've got now is we've got the, the smaller one and the larger one and we need to combine them to be a single mesh rather than two so we're going to use bridge end loops to do this and that basically gets two well end loops so it's like two rings and it bridges them using uh, faces and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into face select mode by pressing 3 we're going to delete both of those faces and then we're going to select the outside edge of both our meshes by pressing alt shift and clicking both of them and then we're going to bridge the end loops by press, by searching for bridge end loops. And it should be in mesh also. 
Vampire of the Foot. It's easier to do to just search it by pressing space, by the way. So yes, we can see that that has now bridged our end loop, so it's one mesh, and that looks brilliant. And it's just a simple case that looks awesome. So yes, we can now you can customize this however you want. You can add text by embossing logos or whatever. You can add holes wherever buttons are or where you want a USB cable to go out of. But I won't be doing that. I'll just yeah, I'm just telling you that you would use you would use a boolean with the difference or union modifiers enabled to do that. It's quite simple. Just make the design and then add it later. So I'll leave you to your creativity for that one. Then you can position it on and rotate it to be the right way. I'll show you a good way of rotating the whole thing afterwards. But that looks good. That's so now we've got most of the keyboard and it looks brilliant. It looks pretty much identical to the one I did. But now we're going to make some e little extras. We're going to make a screw. We're going to make a, like several screws to go screw into the through the screw holes into the case. In the video I added screw holes on my case, but you can do that. I'm not going to do it now because I don't really need to. So now we're going to add a cylinder and it's going to be around 8 mil long and about point, one point, one point. So it's going to be about 1 mil wide and about 16 vertices. So that's the basic, yeah, that's the shape of the screw. And we're going to make the head by extruding up about 2 mil maybe about 1.5 and scaling out to make the screw head let me bring it down a bit and we can extrude it to give it a bit of thickness but that's the screw head we can give it a cross shape by um, by adding a cube and it's good it's good that it's one mil that's what you want and now we're going to select the four edges and extrude in one millimeter on the sh on the screw head, and then once again we're going to use a boolean to cut that into the screw shape. So add modifier boolean difference, and use the eyedropper on the cube to, and then we hide the cube to see that it's cut it into the. So now we can apply it, and we can the cube and delete it. For some reason it put mine in the stabilizers set. So we can then make the tapered bottom of the screw. Just extrude it and scale it in. And that looks good. It's a nice, simple screw that you can make with relative ease. And then you just duplicate it for each of your screw holes. So you put it there, duplicate that. And make sure that the head can actually fit through the hole at the minute this one won't be able to but you would scale it in a bit more that. oh and we can lower it down we can select them all and drag them down with G and Z and that looks good so you finished you've now made a you've made a keyboard and yes it looks good but the problem is that it's all gonna move around at the minute and So we're going to select all, then we're going to parent the case by pressing Control P, and we want to keep the transform, and that will make sure that whenever we remove the case, that it moves each every, of everything well. It moves it accurately, or the same for everything, and it moves everything at once. So that simplifies things a lot. But yeah, in the next video we're going to be tackling the materials because at the minute if you render it it's just going to look like a white box. So uh, yeah, stick around for that. Uh, like, subscribe, all of that. And thank you for watching.